Hello learners. Welcome to Introduction to Statistics. In this video we will see an overview of what entirely is statistics. Of course, statistics is defined in singular and in plural sense. First, let's take a look at statistics as a set of data. So statistics in plural sense is a set of numerical data. For instance, birthdays, ages, heights, salaries, monthly sales of a company or even the vital statistics in a beauty contest. Under the set of data, we have three sub-branches. The levels of measurement, classification of variables and classification of data. We define measurement to be the process of determining the value or label of a particular variable for a particular experimental unit. Let's see what we have under the levels of measurement. We have nominal data or nominal level. This is also known as the classificatory scale or the categorical scale. The nominal level is the weakest level of measurement where numbers or symbols are used simply for categorizing subjects into different groups. For example, primary colors, red, blue, yellow, or sex, male and female. Next we have the ordinal level. The ordinal level of measurement contains the properties of the nominal level, and in addition, the numbers assigned to categories of any variable may be ranked or ordered in some low to high manner. For example, student ratings one poor, two fair, three good, four excellent, or grade year levels or the intensity scale of an earthquake. Next is the interval level. The interval level is that which has the properties of the nominal and ordinal levels, and in addition, the distances between any two numbers on the scale are of known sizes. An interval scale must have a common and constant unit of measurement. Furthermore, the unit of measurement is arbitrary, and there is no true zero point. For example, body temperature in degrees Celsius, IQ rating or even business capital. Last we have the ratio level. The ratio level of measurement contains all the properties of the interval level, and in addition, it has a true zero point. For example, our age in years, annual income of a company, or the number of hours spent in playing mobile games. Let's go now to classification of variables. But first, how do we define a variable? Generally, a variable is a characteristic or attribute of persons or objects which can assume different values or labels for different persons or objects under consideration. A variable can either be qualitative or quantitative. Qualitative variable means that a variable yields categorical responses. For instance, occupation or civil status. While a quantitative variable is a variable that takes on numerical values representing an amount or quantity. For instance, height, weight, or the number of students enrolled in statistics course. Furthermore, under quantitative we have discrete and continuous. A discrete variable is the one which can assume finite or, at most, countably infinite number of values, usually measured by counting or enumeration. While a continuous variable is a variable which can assume infinitely many values corresponding to a line interval. Take a look at the diagram to see the notions under a variable. So the last branch under the set of data is the classification of data. But wait. How do we define a data? In layman's term, a data is simply the collection of all observations. When we say observation, we mean the realized value of the variable. Under which we have primary and secondary sources as well as external and internal information. Primary source is a data measured by the researcher or agency that published it, while secondary source is any republication of data by another agency. For example, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases reported by the World Health Organization are primary sources, and all subsequent journals of other agencies are secondary sources. Further, internal data is an information that relates to the operations and functions of the organization collecting the data, while external data relates to some activity outside the organization collecting the data. For example, the COVID-19 data in the Philippines is internal data within the country. But, for any other countries in the Southeast Asia, it is external data. Alright. Let's take a look at statistics as a branch of knowledge. So in its singular sense, statistics refers to the principles and methods that have been developed for handling numerical data. This includes collection, organization, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. A statistical investigation must undergo these stages. Let's start with collection. Collection of data marks the beginning of any statistical inquiry. At the outset, a researcher identifies the problem, and then he collects data on that problem. 
collection may be in a form of an interview. Normally, an interview is a way of collecting information done in a face-to-face -face setup. But because of the advancement of digital world, it can now be done online. We also have collection through answering questionnaires. Usually, questionnaires are in a form of open-ended questions, close-ended questions, rating questions, Likert scale questions or simply, a multiple choice type of questions. Next is data collection through direct observation. You gather knowledge of the researched phenomenon through making observations of the phenomena, as and when it occurs. Generally, observations can be overt, that is, everyone knows they are being observed. Or it may be covert, that is, no one knows they are being observed, and the observer is concealed. Last we have collection by looking at records or database. This is a very common way of collecting data, especially if the data are not available in the present time. So again, collection can be done in various ways. We have interview, questionnaire, observation and collection by looking at records or databases. Next we have organization. And these are the examples. Array. FDT or the frequency distribution table. Stem and leaf method. First we have array. An array is an arrangement of values or observations in rows and in columns. A data array are observations arranged systematically in order, whether in an increasing or decreasing manner. Then we have FDT. A meaningful way to organize your data is to use a table that summarizes your observations and their frequencies. It's a useful way to organize data if you have a list of numbers that represent the frequency of a certain outcome in a sample. Normally, a frequency distribution table has two columns. The first column lists all the various outcomes that occur in the data, and the second column lists the frequency of each outcome. Putting this kind of data into a table makes it simpler to understand and analyze. Next we have the stem and leaf plot. Another way to organize data is to use a stem and leaf plot. This is sometimes called a stem plot. This is what a stem and leaf plot looks like. Each data value or number is separated into two parts. The very last digit is called the leaf, and what comes before is called the stem. So again, under organization we have data array, frequency distribution table and the stem and leaf plot. Let's have now presentation. Data which are collected by the researcher from the primary source for the first time are raw data. So after collection, information should be organized and presented properly. Presentation of data is essential for their analysis. Data presentation may be in a form of textual, tabular, and graphical. Textual data refers to systematically collected material consisting of written, printed, or electronically published words, typically either purposefully written or transcribed from speech. Tabular data is data that's structured into rows, each of which contains information about a particular entity. The frequency distribution table is also an example of a tabular presentation. Relationships between different variables can be presented by means of graphs. Different types of graphs are bar graphs, histograms, line graphs, cumulative frequency curve, pie chart and ogive. We also have boxplot which is a method for graphically depicting groups of numerical data through their quartiles. Box plots may also have lines extending from the boxes or whiskers, indicating variability outside the upper and lower quartiles. So again, under presentation we have textual, tabular and graphical. Next is analysis. Data analysis is a process of summarizing trends and patterns observed in the data, determining major differentials or relationship among variables used in the study, and the application of appropriate statistical tests on a set of data to answer the problem. Basically, data and statistics is sometimes classified according to how many variables are in a particular study. Valid conclusions are derived by carefully analyzing the data. Univariate analysis talks about one variable. By considering one variable, the goal of univariate analysis is to describe the data itself or find patterns in the data. Bivariate analysis means the analysis of bivariate data. It is one of the simplest forms of statistical analysis and is used to find out if there is a relationship between two sets of values. By convention, we use the variables x and y. Multivariate extends the analysis in three or more variables. The final step in a statistical inquiry is the interpretation of data. This is the process of explaining the meaning of a data with emphasis in the highlights and trends shown by the data. It further explains the meaning of the data and relates the findings to result of related studies to the theoretical framework or conceptual framework. 
Remember that correct interpretation gives valid conclusions. So that's it for the definition of statistics. Hope you learned something. In our next video, we'll talk about methods of applied statistics and differentiate descriptive and inferential statistics. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.